Well, I'm Sam Borden from the New York Times. I uh, want to th thanks uh, to Robbie Rogers for joining me in this uh, Google Plus Hangout. Uh, Robbie, uh, you know, obviously you've had uh, a lot of attention on you know your story over the past month or so, and I think it's great that you're uh, taking the time to talk uh, and you know really just kind of share the story. Um, what what's it been like for you? You know, the last couple of weeks, how's how's life been different? You know, I, I told you before that you know I came out to my family. Uh, sometime last year, I think it was October, November. Um, so it's been very different for, since then. But once I decided to, you know, let the rest of the world know, I guess um, it definitely changed things a bit as well. It made, I mean, it changed everything. You know, uh, after that, it was just like I'm totally out there. I'm totally honest with everyone. People know exactly where I stand, and and that's that. So the past few weeks have been. First, it was like, all right, I'm doing this. I'm not going to do anything else. Not doing any interviews. Not going to do anything. Just going to move with my life. So, you know, definitely for the first few weeks, I was just ignoring everyone, ignoring all the emails and calls and text messages. Didn't matter. Um, and then I realized, you know, I, I think it's right to you know speak with, you know, s some good people and share a story that hopefully will will reach people and that people can relate to. So, you know, I'm speaking with you, obviously. Um, and then I spoke with uh, uh, Don McRae at the Guardian. So um, I'm really happy about it, and I feel great about it. I think, um, you know, hopefully um, it will touch people, you know, people from all different um, walks of life, I guess, if you want to say that. Uh, have you gotten a lot of feedback, you know, emails or calls? I mean, what are some of the, I guess, more interesting people mm -hmm. or places that you've heard from? I've heard from people from all over the world with stories that, you know, are just made for the movies. So I, I can't share those. Obviously, they're confidential. Um, but they're very moving and touching. And, you know, I've told people, you know, I've had so much support and it's just been so positive. I honestly wish that everyone, even emails for people that haven't come out because they're afraid or married, <laughs> and anything you can think of. You know, I, I just hope and I wish that people could have the same kind of support like that's my that's just being totally honest is I think that maybe some people don't have as much like just to think that people m might not have as much support it just kind of like really bumps me out actually can you give me an idea of how far away or what was the furthest away that you heard from somebody how far has your has your story you know gone mm. do you think well my geography isn't great but <laughs> I don't know somewhere in Asia or right right I think it, people just not just gay people or it's just people can everyone feels a bit different and I think people just can relate to that so when they read something that's you know so honest and so emotional um, I think it just it touches them and that wasn't my goal I told you last night that my goal was actually just to be honest myself for my sanity to do something to make a change that to improve my happiness and in the end it's um, you know, has helped other people as well. So, um, you know, it has done more than what I expected. When, when you when you started this process, when you started to think, okay, I need to make this decision. I need to make this this choice and and do this. Did you imagine that it would have the far-reaching effect? I mean, at what no. point did that sort of come into your mind? I guess. I had one of my good buddies was with me, and you know, I turned off my turned off my phone, turned, shut, turned, closed my laptop and had a bunch of drinks and I was just like going to do my marathon the next half marathon the next day and um, he's just like, whoa, there's a lot of activity and I was like, okay, well, <laughs> just don't tell me, I don't care, I don't care, like, let's, whatever. So, I mean, I, I not at one second was I expecting um, this kind of support and to reach so many people. You obviously have fans all over the world, you know, England and the United States certainly, and I, I'm sure that a lot of them are wondering or wanting to know whether you'll continue playing at some point. Um, I have, you know, different options and different things going on, but I don't know if I'll if I'll go back to football in a week or in a few years or never. I just I love football and you know I'll watch the U.S. team play. I'll you know, support all my friends that I've grown up with, but um, I'm going to be selfish with this one, and I don't care how many people want me to come back to football. I'm just going to live my life and um, I'm not really looking to please people in that way at all. And I know that might make some people upset, but um, I still finding my way. I'm still, you know, growing up. So 
you know, there might come a time where I come back and play, or you know, definitely at least five aside, or different things like that. But um, we'll see. So it's it's a, it's a good question. I'm, I'm not quite sure. This has, I'm sure, been the longest time that you've been away from football, right? I mean, True. since you were a kid. What's that been yeah. like? You know, as a footballer, as an athlete, period, you um, have routines where you, you know, get up and go to training and come back and whatever. Um, so it's been a bit strange, but I've kept myself very, very busy. <laughs> um, you know, working out a lot, running, doing Bikram yoga, um, just have been so busy. So, um, but then again, like still, the, the first thing I do when I wake in the morning when I check my email and check stuff, it's like I go on the football websites and check what's going on. So that's just that's just part of me, and you know, it isn't like who I am, but it's just you know, part of me. I'll always love football, no matter what. So, well, did you have any kind of withdrawal from football? I mean, you know, no, uh, no, no, nothing that dramatic. I mean, I've always been able to put it in perspective. You know, I know football right. is something I love, but it doesn't run my life. What uh, what have you been doing? I mean, what are some things that you're hoping to do now that you're you know in this next phase? Um, there's been a bunch of stuff going on. Um, so I mean, I still have been working with my brand Halsey out of LA for the past three years. Um, I was interning at Men's Health because I wanted to learn the magazine side. No, I'm not interested in working in magazines, but I just wanted to continue to educate myself. Uh, I was interning at a PR company called Trace Publicity, a fashion PR company that you know, I wanted to, again to build just to continue to educate myself to learn all sides of the business. Um, and obviously working out. I uh, I write for a, uh, a fashion magazine called Bello, out of Bello Magazine out of LA. I've been doing that for the past three, four months. So I've been busy. Um, going to be doing a Nike charity event uh, next month, uh, meeting with Ralph Lauren next week. Uh, I don't know, just a bunch of weird things, little things. And then um, just kind of trying to take a step away and take some, I guess, me time, if you want to say, just kind of some time to like, all right, you've been going pretty hard, and you've obviously been carrying all this weight on your on your shoulders, and you know, so maybe it's a good time to take a breath. And um, I'm going to be going home soon, just hanging hang with my family. Obviously, like you say, you were carrying this this thing for 25 years, basically. Uh, can you kind of give us an idea, maybe, of what does that feel like, and then what does it feel like to not be carrying that all of a sudden? It's just like awful cramp in your stomach. I mean, not at all times, but just like, you know, certain times where uh, you're just afraid that people might, you know, ask you or figure out, like, say, oh, like, oh, Robbie, are you gay? Or like, oh, why aren't you hooking up to these girls? Like, just stupid things. And then just to be totally honest and open with people, it's just like, you can do, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, you can take on anything. Like, okay, you know who I am. When something goes wrong, it's just like, it doesn't matter. I'm, I could do, I could, I mean, no offense to people that work in coffee shops. I go work in coffee shops the rest of my life, but at least I am who I am. I'm honest with people. I can just move on and, you know, speak openly with my family. And um, it's it's the most amazing fe feeling. And uh, you know, I've told people that um, telling my family and friends was the best moment of my life. And I would probably say the second best was posting that letter that I never thought that I would ever post. And two years ago, I never thought I would tell my family. So. It's crazy how time uh, time changes things. The process for, of writing that letter, I mean, uh, you know, it was such a powerful letter. It had such, you know, very, uh, uh, you know, almost, uh, you know, really emotional language in it. Uh, yeah. When, it was where, a reflection. Where, where were so, you when you wrote it? How did you get to writing it? I mean, how did that come yeah. to be? I told you I told my family in, I don't know, October or whatever. And then I wrote that letter probably in December. And it was very much just a reflection of my past life, I guess, and I wrote it, you know, a bit like therapeutically, or I wrote it just to, just to have it, I thought, you know, maybe one day I'll share this, maybe not, who knows, never thought that it would be, what was like February or something that I would do it, but I, I was just laying in bed and I was just thinking about, you know, times and, and emotions that I've had in the past, and um, so I, I wrote it like really late one night, just hanging hang out in bed. Like saved it on my desktop, closed my laptop, didn't think about it for a few days. Went to football the next day. Um, I think I sent it to my little sister, just like see. I was like, "What do you think of this?" Cause she's a, she's an amazing creative writer. So I was like, "What do you what do you think of this?" And she's just like, "Yeah, it's cool." 
<laughs> like, okay, anyways, so what's going on at the house, you know? It was just like, whatever. Um, writing it for me, though, um, was, I mean, the, one of the reasons why I thought I never would post it was because, like, there must be so many grammatical errors in that thing. Like, it's just <laughs> probably so bad. So I was just like, I'm never going to post this. <laughs> or at least I'll, like, share it with someone first, and they'll be like, yeah, Robbie, you need to change this. But uh, writing for me was great. I mean, it's, I think I've always had, like, a diary my whole life or always just written down stuff. So um, I think it was just a great way for me to just kind of reflect on my past. Um, and then when it came to the day that I was going to do it, that I posted it, had no plans of posting the date at all. I was, I touched my mom in the morning, like nothing out of like ordinary, just whatever. I don't know. I think I was around East London with some friends and just hanging out. And uh, I was talking with them about should I do post something? Should I just leave it? Whatever. They're like, dude, either stop talking about it or you post it, but like just stop because you're knowing us. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's why I did it. I was like, all right, screw you guys. <laughs> so I clicked it, closed my laptop, turned off my phone, went to Shorch House and had some drinks. <laughs> One too many. Had, had you written things like that in your diary before? No. no, no, no. I mean, I've written, I've had a diary, but like I was, I think like so crazy that I would like not even write stuff like that in my diary, just afraid that someone might find it. Wow. You know, that's yeah, and that's how that's how insane I was, and how afraid I was to uh, come out. I guess, which is just like I look back at it now, and it's like, like, what were you thinking? How long did you? How long had you been writing in a diary since you were like a little kid? I mean, I mean, I just had, I've had diaries on and off since I was a little kid. Yeah. Wow. Just you know, writing about trips, snatching trips, writing stupid things like uh, meetings or just d didn't matter. I just always had writing, writing. I was always writing in one. That's pretty amazing, though, right? To have a diary that that long. I mean, that's the place you're supposed to tell your secrets, right? I mean, and you still didn't you should feel... be able to. Yeah. You should I mean, be able to. <laughs> looking back, I mean, do you almost get? I don't know, if angry at yourself or, I mean, just like, no, I can't believe no. I couldn't do that. I mean, no, 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 because I am where I am because of my path and, you know, right. everything along the way, I wouldn't change anything. Did you, did you, uh, expect the kind of feedback that you got from friends and family? I mean, did you, did, were you worried at all about how people would react to this? I mean, otherwise I would have just told them. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was afraid to tell everyone. Afraid to tell everyone. Um, it's kind of, it's obviously a lot easier now. I can tell whoever now, but and it got easier and easier. But, oh, my gosh, it was so scary because you have it built up in your head that they just, you know, there's a chance that they'll just be like, um, like, well, oh, I feel like I don't know you now. Or, I don't know, you just, there's so many concerns that go through your mind. Um, so I was... Petrified. Like I, again, I, I uh, was like, you know, telling my sister, I was so nervous. Uh, but everyone, again, has been so supportive and so amazing that I'm just, I'm so happy that I did it. Uh, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but what's your thought on where uh, sports culture, you know, is in terms of accepting gay athletes, both in the United States and abroad? Yeah, I said to you, and I hope I, I'm sure I'm gonna make people mad this, with this, but you know, there's obviously a problem with football because no gay footballers have come out or feel like they can come out, and you know, it's it's a problem. Obviously, I mean, there's no there's no other way around it. Yeah, right. Otherwise, exactly. other guys would have done it. You know, right. um, so now all the fans are like, oh, everyone's supporting you. You should do it, and it's just like, well, wait. Take a step back, like, you know, great. I'm so happy for all the support, and it's awesome. But there's obviously some things that need to change, and don't know really what that is. I guess that's the next step, and hopefully more guys will feel like they can come out. But uh, athletics is a difficult one. There's such like you know, it's a manly macho, a lot of testosterone. You know, ath athletics, you're tough, whatever, all that stupid stuff. Um, so it's a weird. It's it's really strange, you know. It's it's tough, but um, I know it will get there. I know I know eventually, you know. This this conversation we're having now, we'll look people will look back like, well, that's stupid, <laughs> you know. I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, just like when um, black men and women join sports, you know, I'm sure the same the same will happen. Um, but I think it's going to take some time, and 
hopefully more people will come out. Obviously, you sort of have that opportunity to be, you know, the Jackie Robinson or whatever you want to, whatever the label yeah. would be, right? Can you just maybe talk about sort of how you deal with the idea that you could be that? And I think you yeah. mentioned it before, like, you know, this is, you want to you want to be selfish about this a little bit because it's for you. But at the yeah. same time, there is this larger issue too. Of course. Yeah, of course. And, you know, I've thought about that as well. Um, and I know a lot of people would love for me to come and play football. And yeah, if I decide to do it, I'm going to very much do it because I want to, not because of anyone else. And I know it's selfish, but, you know, God has given me this one life to live, to be authentic and genuine. And I really don't care if people want me to play football now. If they don't, if they do, if I want to come back to football, I'm not going to come back to football as a gay footballer. I'm going to come back to football as a footballer, period. You know, I don't want that circus and people being like, oh, the gay guy, he played well this weekend. Or, oh, that gay dude, like, he's soft. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I um, I obviously see the opportunity and how great it would be, and I'm sure you know it'd be great money. But I just I don't care. I don't care about that stuff. I care about my happiness, my friends and family. Um, obviously now really to help people out that were in my situation. Uh, but you know that's it. That's it. I don't I I, I don't care what people want me to do. Before this, before this happened, right? You probably had an idea of what your life was going to be for the next year. You know, just based on what it had been the years past. Mm -hmm. Now that this has happened, do you have an idea of what the next year for you is going to look like? Or are you kind of just going day by day? How do you? How far ahead are you thinking? I'll be home. I'll go to the Nike event in April. Um, there's just little things, you know, that I have to do. But yeah, football gives you so much structure where you're like, all right got this camp or this stuff, this tournament, you know, my contract here is for this many years or whatever. And of course in football, things change quickly as well. Yeah. But, um, no, now I just feel like there's just so many possibilities that, you know, I just take some time to decide which ones I want to do and do them in a very classy, thoughtful way where I'm, you know, being positive with people and, not being cheesy or fake or just, I don't know, just jumping at every opportunity to just keep, I don't know. Because I just don't want to, I don't want to turn this into a negative. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, you know, I, I like where it's at right now. <laughs> I'll be home. I'll go to the Nike event in April. Um, there's just little things, you know, that I have to do, but... Yeah, football gives you so much structure where you're like, all right, got this camp or this stuff, this tournament, you know, my contract here is for this many years or whatever. And of course, in football, things change quickly as well. Yeah. But um, no, now I just feel like there's just so many possibilities that, you know, I just take some time to decide which ones I want to do and do them in a very classy, thoughtful way where I'm, you know, being positive with people and not being cheesy or fake or just, I don't know, just jumping at every opportunity to just keep, I don't know, because I just don't want to, I don't want to turn this into a negative. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, you know, I, I like where it's at right now. <laughs> I'm curious, you know, and I, I would imagine that certainly like the American, uh, you know, viewers of this maybe are, are similar to me and that, you know, I, I have an idea of what having a friend whose closet it is like in American culture, what it's like to sort yeah. of have that existence. Do yeah. you think you could give us an idea maybe of what it's like to live through that in British culture? I mean, is it, do you think it's different in any way or? What's uh, your well, I, I mean, in London, it's so open and so liberal. It's like, you know, you, I'm, I live in East London is an awesome spot where it's like you'll go to a club which is like gay straight the fashion kids the east gangsters like <laughs> it's just a crazy mix right which i love about london you know hate the weather love the people <laughs> right um so it's it is different i think that you know when, when i talk to my friends here about the united states and they're like yeah but you know you got like la and new york i'm like yeah but there still is a lot of the United States that um, is a bit homophobic and 
um, racist at times. And as a nation, I think we have a lot of uh, growing up to do, and um, I think we need to be honest with each other. But then, you know, I said this to you: is if I wanted to come back to football, it would be the easiest to do in the MLS because the MLS is a league, and the footballers there are so open to everyone. And I know when I played in Columbus, like. Like Steve Lenhart and I, we were roommates and great friends, still great friends. Whenever someone new to the team, someone new to the team, you know, showed up, we would like help them find their car, take them to find a house, be having barbecues with them. That doesn't happen in any other country, or at least that I've been to. You know, you don't have, and I'm not just saying us, but like footballers in the MLS are um, so open and willing to get behind, you know, great causes. And uh, um, I don't know where that is though, because then you look at our society and you know California, you know still I couldn't get married in California if I wanted to, you know, so uh, I guess it's just a bit backwards. It, it, Sorry, it how much of that did you get? <laughs> uh, after after the barbecues is where I. It oh okay, yeah, so I was saying just like the guys in the MLS are just so so open to accepting everyone, um, and I said that as a society we're a bit. Backwards, like or not backwards, but just it's the opposite. Where yeah. it's here in the UK, I think they're more open to you know a more liberal or more um, like in London. Like I said, you know, there's gay people, straight people all hanging out together. It's not a big problem. And there are parts right. of the United States that are very much like that. But then there's other parts of the United States that are um, still uh, a bit behind. So uh, it's it's a weird dynamic. It's really interesting. In your mind, the way you know, British football is now, there's any way you could comfortably come and play as a gay player there, or not at this point? You know, that's the honest answer, is you just don't know because it's uh, been such a, a weird subject, and yeah. you know, I've heard things in locker rooms where it's just been, obviously you got, these guys aren't homophobic, but they'll say things that are just so malicious and just so homophobic that I would say, like, no, I can never come out and play. But then... Yeah. It's the same guys that reached out to me and were like, Robbie, like, I love you so much. Like, I'm so happy you did this. And I was just like, I want to be like, dude, you just like said this. <laughs> and and, and I'm, I'm not stupid. So I know that they say these things just to make each other laugh or whatever. But when you hear it from them and it sounds a bit malicious and a bit ridiculous, uh, you, take it to, you take it to heart. You know, it, it sucks. So uh, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know if, if anyone could – to deal with it, but it'd have to be a very strong person, and I'm just not at that point in my life right now. Do you feel now that you're sort of into this next phase of your life, has it affected how you imagine your own family life going forward? I mean, do you want to have a family? Do you want to be married someday? I mean, what's your what's your yeah, thought? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't really thought that far. Um, it has affected my immediate family now. I mean, we've I'm I was close to my family, but now more than ever, I feel. Like I know my family's so excited to see me next month. Yeah. Um, it's like they said, like it's it's been a lifetime. Like no, it's been like a year. <laughs> you know, they're um, just so supportive of me and so excited to uh, just have me feel comfortable around them at all times because I wasn't, I wasn't. So um, I'm really excited to get home. I keep tell, I tell them every day, and I tell my friends like I can't wait to get back to LA. And this is like, and I yeah. love London. I just came back to get get back to LA, see my family, and hang out outside. Just like, just share yeah. with them, and obviously, just have nights where you just hang out and talk about um, weird stuff. I wonder. Uh, I mean, you know, this this you may not have an interesting story or answer for this, but uh, you know, I've had when I've known friends that have come out, uh, especially if they were athletic types. One of the things they were most concerned about was telling their dad. And I was just sort of curious, I mean, how did that go? How did your dad, you know? No, my react? dad was awesome. My dad was awesome. Um, no, I wasn't. I mean, of course, I guess the dynamic between a son and a father is a bit different because, yeah, yeah. you know, he's like the dad and he's like the man. And so you don't want to, or at least I didn't want to, I don't know, I didn't want to, um, you know, you still want to feel like a man, like your dad. You know, that's the guy that you try to relate to the most, that you try to live up to be. So when you notice that you're very different from him, yeah. it's, a bit, it's a bit more difficult. But then again, you know, my dad and I, we had a conversation. And we talk we talk every day, pretty much. And it's been fine. It's been really cool. 
Um, That's great. So I'm very lucky because you know, not everyone has that. Right. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I guess it is a bit more difficult to tell your dad than your mom. Do you have any anybody that reacted negatively? I mean, you had mentioned, I guess, yesterday you had one friend that you never heard back from, but otherwise, has yeah. it been 100% positive? It. Yeah, yeah, 100% positive. Just haven't heard back you know, from one person, but um, I think that maybe he's dealing with his own stuff, maybe. And I mean, he's a friend of mine, but he's not a very close friend of mine, so I don't really, I don't really care. Right. I, I hate to say that, but it's just like, all right, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Uh, last thing, and then I'll you know I, th I think we could probably wrap it up. But uh, how would you, how would you describe? I mean, this entire experience. I'm sure, like you said, two years ago, you never even thought you'd have it. Now yeah. that you've had it, and you're on the other side, is mm -hmm. it relief, or what is sort of the overwhelming emotion that you have? Yeah, relief that now it's done. That it's just been, you know, a positive experience. Um, it's been very emotional to like share these kind of feelings with everyone because I mean I think a lot of my friends if you talk to my friends I'm pre I've always been a pretty um, pretty private person so to go from you know never wanting to come out <laughs> to telling my family you know to writing this and posting this and then now to do interviews it's like I've actually like I'm a bit impressed that I've been able to <laughs> to do it all, you know. You've done great. Just, yeah, you've done great. Yeah, I'm just. Um, it's been it's been a roller coaster, and uh, we'll see what's next. I mean, it's it's been crazy, and there's just some crazy stuff coming up. So I just hope that it can continue to be a positive experience. You must you must be kind of excited too, right? To I mean, because you said one of the things that you said yesterday that really stuck with me was that a number of important things that have happened to you, like winning an MLS Cup or getting to go yeah. play in England, had been sort of not as rewarding because you felt yeah. like maybe you weren't 100% there. Or you must yeah, be kind definitely. of excited to like experience the full range of emotions yeah. now, right? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's, that's a great, great point, yeah. I mean, I told you when we won the MLS Cup, I like, you know, we had some drinks after the team and then I went home because we were in LA. I was yeah. like sitting in my bed being like, why am I not like out partying with my friends and celebrating this? And I was just like, now it's you know this is me. I'm, whatever I do now, I can just be myself and enjoy it, and not you know live up to any expectations or uh, or any stereotypes, and I can just enjoy myself. Um, and so it's it's the best feeling in the world, and I know I keep saying that, and people will probably get sick of me saying it, but um, it's the truth. It's uh, I'm so happy uh, that I've done this. Awesome. Well, I guess I mean it always feels weird being like congratulations for something like yeah, that. But I, I mean, know. you know, know. but uh, know. I'm happy that you 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 feel so good and, and that Thanks. you're you know you've reached that point. Thank you. Yeah, it is weird. People say, "Oh, congrats." It's like, no, like I had to do this. Like this was for <laughs> right. my sanity. Like this isn't, you know, an accomplishment. This is just, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, you've handled it really well, and uh, Thank you. you know, thanks so much for talking with me about it. Cool. Of course. Of course.